see? His brush isn't that bad. I know. There is a good boy. Professor, I didn't see you come in. Have you come to check on us? Sylvain is taking Minette out for a ride. She's still getting used to the new Dark Knight armor. He thought it might help to do a little patrol around Garrig Mach while wearing it. No, I don't mind. Actually, we finished most of the stable duties early. I suppose that's why you paired us together. We make a good team, he and I. I'm just finishing grooming the Pegasus eye. All that's left is Eggle here, and then I'll be all set. I always save him for last. He gets nervous of the brush. Help me. No, I don't mind, but you don't have to do that. I'm sure you have your own duties to attend to. And really, I like spending time in the stables. There's something comforting in taking care of something outside of myself. Ah, I should have known. You are a professor, after all even all these years later. And back when you lived as a mercenary, too. You dedicated your life to protecting others. In that case, I won't stop you. Here, there's an extra brush stored over on the hook. There you go. I'll take his left flank, you take the right. sensitive around your wing. <laughs> Watch where you put those things, Eggle. You'll knock me into the hay. No, I'm not actually mad at him. He's just cheeky and stubborn, and he likes to push other people's patience. That probably makes me the best rider for him, though. Why? I don't know if you've noticed, Professor, but all my friends are moody in one way or another. And they don't take kindly to being looked after, even though they refuse to take care of themselves. after anyone. But you don't have to be here in the stables, do you? And yet, here we are.
think part of it is in how I was raised. My father has always looked after me. He made sure I never went hungry, even when famine struck our territory and there wasn't enough food to go around. He put himself last and made sure as his children we always had enough to fill our bellies. I didn't understand it fully as a child, but even so, it is a lesson that sat with me and shaped who I have become. It comes out most often when I'm looking after my friends. Sylvain leaves a mess behind him everywhere he goes, and I'm always there to clean it up. He's hopeless without me. And Felix isn't much better. He only ever thinks in terms of battle, and his abrasive personality causes one uproar or another each week. Then there's his highness. But you'd know best about him these days, wouldn't you? I don't mean to speak ill of them. Sylvain, His Highness, Felix, they're not bad people. And as much as I look out for them, they're caretakers in their own ways, too. You know, after Glenn passed, I spent months locked up in my room. Around that time, Sylvain came to stay with us, all the way from Gautier. He was the first person waiting outside my door when I finally came out. And all that time, he'd been the one taking care of my horse. We went to the stables together that morning. It was the first time I felt like I could breathe after the tragedy. I'm sure you can relate, Professor. I hope we were there for you, the way he was for me. Felix? Well, to be honest, I find him harder to understand these days. He's changed a lot since then. Of course he has. For a while, I thought he didn't care. The way he rejected our memories of Glenn and refused to call him a hero. But I think I'm finally starting to understand his feelings. And as much as he complains and snarls and snaps at people, he still cares in his own little ways. Whenever my favorite sweet buns are being served in the dining hall, he always takes one just to give it to me. And even though he hates sweets, he still tries Annette's pastries when she asks. He's blunt and impatient and restless, and there's still a lot to him I don't understand. But there's good in him, too.
You've probably met all kinds during your time as a mercenary, right? All the different people you've worked with or served. Were there any like him? People who were hard to understand, but good underneath it all. I see. No two people are ever completely the same. I'm glad I'm not the only one who believes in him, though. Some people think Ash and I are naive to see the good in people, but I'd rather have hope for peace than expect betrayal, even in wartime. Glenn could be cynical and snarky at times. I'd forgotten in the wake of the tragedy, until Felix started emulating that side of him. Is it bad? I don't think so. Glenn was always gentle with me, and serious about being a knight. That kind of integrity, his sense of duty, they were all things I admired about him. Things I aspired to be. But I don't think I want to be the same kind of a knight as him now. It's as you've said. No two people are ever completely the same. I've grown to realize I want to follow my own path. Inspired by his, but not walking in his footsteps. Have you ever felt that way, Professor? About Captain Gerald? Well... For what it's worth, I think you're an excellent commander. The life you were raised in certainly played a part in shaping you, but the professor as we know them, well, that's someone you designed. I'm still learning how to mold myself into what I want to be, but that's the conclusion I've come to so far.
there we are. All combed out, Ego. How does he look on your side, Professor? Perfect. Well done, team. By the way, Professor, did you know this breed of Pegasus is native only to Fodlun? It's true. I had stable duty with Petra once, back during our academy days. She was fascinated by them, especially these thick tufts of feathers and hair they have here. I suppose that makes sense. Fodlun is a much colder continent than Bridget especially in Fargus. Anyone raised in Fargus has to have thick skin and a sturdy coat, human or otherwise. Pegasus knights have it particularly tough, being in the air. We have to wear thick padded leggings and fleece-lined tunics when we ride. We can't wear big cloaks or heavy furs, or we'd sacrifice agility and speed. I cut my hair for the same reason, actually. With the winds and flying, long hair just isn't practical for battle. Do you have much experience riding, Professor? Captain Gerald taught you? So young! I'm impressed. It can be hard to stay astride a horse when you're so small. I would sometimes ride in front of Glenn as a small child, and he would let me hold the reins, though mostly I think it was so he could keep his hands free to hold me upright. We could never go any faster than a trot like that. Really? I can't imagine. You've lived such a different life from us, Professor. Do you miss it, being a mercenary? Hmm. It is what you were raised with, isn't it? I don't miss the worries over food we had in Galatea, but I do miss the sense of camaraderie it brought. I think Ash and I have shared feelings on that. It sounds like a hard life to me, though being a mercenary. Although, I suppose it's not that different from the war now. I think someone like Felix might even enjoy it. Sometimes I worry about him, and what he'll do once we win this war. What if he gives up his title completely, and goes on to be a mercenary instead? I suppose you're right. It wouldn't be much different from me going off to become a knight. Will you go back to it after the war is over? When we no longer need a commander? Maybe so. But you know, I think we'll always need our professor. There's Sylvain. Well, Professor, I'm sorry to have talked your ear off like this. But now that our work is done, why don't we all head to the dining hall together? It'll be a chance to rest after a morning of hard labor. And besides, I think you and I share a similar opinion when it comes to food. You know, the other students always said You'd sometimes eat three or four meals around the dining hall, one after another? That's definitely a level of dedication to bonding with your students I've never seen from anyone else. I'll wash up here, and Sylvain and I will meet you there, alright? See you soon, Professor.